Hey, what's up? I just thought I'd make a little video sort of explaining a little bit how I got the Three Inches of Blood gig back in 2007, uh, there and about. Um, so I would have been, I think, 21 at the time. I've been playing in the local metal scene in Vancouver, Canada for about maybe five years or something like that, playing in like some various bands. So my first band was called Angel Grinder, and we did a lot of shows around East Vancouver and all that stuff. It was a pretty cool time for music back then, honestly, because like Strapping a Lad was a local Vancouver metal band, uh, even though obviously they're like world renowned and fucking awesome. But uh, you know, you'd see people, you'd see Byron, you'd see Gene Hoagland out at local Vancouver metal shows and stuff like that. And he was playing in a lot of different bands around town that weren't Strapping a Lad. So one of those bands was a band called Punch Drunk. And they're very, very awesome. I totally recommend you checking them out if you haven't ever heard of them. They made uh, this fantastic record called Music For Them Asses. It's like a play on Music For The Masses, but it's Music For Them Asses. And the, the album cover is like black and it's got like white writing on it. I'll put a picture of it up. But uh, Shane Clark from Three Inches of Blood played in that band as well with Gene. So, we would sometimes play gigs together, and that's where Shane and I first met, and that's kind of where Gene and I first started hanging out as well, was sort of in the local Vancouver metal scene. Um, you know, everybody was, for the most part, like, you know, 10 or more years older than me, so I was like pretty, pretty young at the time, looking pretty young, probably being pretty green too, you know, but I had a few good conversations with Shane. Um, I'd seen Three Inches of Blood play one time at a no longer existing venue called Richards on Richards in Vancouver and uh, saw them there, I had a good conversation with him uh, at the time, it was probably like 2007, probably like early in 2007, like, I don't know, right around the time Fire Up the Blades came out. So that was the record that uh, the late great Joey Jordison produced. And I don't even think I was playing, I might have been that night, but I think I just went to go like check it out, maybe. And. Um, I remember having a really good conversation with Shane backstage, and they had, they were doing their tour cycle for that record, in a, yeah about 2007, so they did their thing for the year. Um, actually, incidentally, that year I did, I flew to New Jersey and did a, I did an audition with the Dillinger Escape Plan. I'll do a little, I'll do like another video on that, explaining that a little bit more, but. I went and did that in like March 2007. They were out, um, sorry, touring Fire Up the Blades in 2007. And then they had a, you know, incident with their drummer uh, in maybe like, I wanna say around f September, maybe around festival season, when festival season occurs in Europe, which is usually around August, June, July, August. So I feel like I talked to Shane around that time. He gave me a call uh, from Europe because I was like, you know, mostly because I was like local and could play, you know what I mean? It was a big time convenience factor, right? So like anything in music, it's really hard to be like, well, you just go to school for four years and then you get your diploma and then you get a good job playing in a heavy metal band. It doesn't quite work like that, right? A lot of the times it's, you know, uh, who you know, who you meet, uh, contacts, all this kind of stuff, at the end of the day, your playing ability matters, but also it really matters what's your personality like because you're gonna have to spend lots of time with these people, right? So for all those reasons, as I've understood, is why he gave me a show. So I was about 21 at the time, he would have been about 31. I mean, geez, where's the time gone? But I remember I was up late, let's say I was up late partying, and they were about nine hours ahead because they were in Europe and I got uh, I got like a message so I called Shane at maybe like three in the morning or something like that and I was just talking to him and it's like hey you know we're finishing up our Europe stuff um, with a fill-in drummer a guy named uh, well Matt and Frank the Tank I think they were their names were but anyways um, when you get back, do you want to jam? So I never really listened to Three Inches of Blood that much before, except what I did notice is that we played a gig with them 
in Whistler in I believe it was 2006 or maybe 2007, one of my old bands. Um, and I was just automatically struck by how fucking crazy the crowd was for this band. Again, I hadn't heard much of their music. I knew them from a few different, for a few different songs, probably like Deadly Sinners and you know, whatever, right? But um, I, was, I wasn't so much hooked into the music as I was hooked into how fucking rivet, riveted the crowd was to the band. Like people were literally, you know, they were like climbing on pipes on the ceiling and then dropping down into the mosh pit and everything, I was like, whoa, people really like this band. And that was like my first impression of Three Inches of Blood. But like I said, I knew Shane from Punch Drunk. I really liked that band. But, you know, fast forward like a year or whatever it was, um, him and I are jamming together. And, uh, it's, you know, it went well. I mean, and the rest is history, as they say. But, you know, that set me off on a path that, you know, had me meeting lots of people who I'm like still friends with today, including the revocation guys. I met, I met Joey Jordison before I even played a show. I think I might've done one or two shows, but again, 2008 was the first tour that we did together in January with the black Dahlia murder and hate eternal and decrepit birth, which was an awesome tour. But we unfortunately had to drop off like halfway through when we got back to the West coast because of a like, brutal snowstorms that were happening, but that's kind of besides the point. On our way out east, they needed to shoot a music video for their new record, but they didn't have an official drummer yet. I wasn't like in the band yet. So they got Joey Jordison to, to be the drummer in the music video, which was Trial of Champions, uh, off the Fire Up the Blades record that Joey produced. So. I got to like hang out while they shot the music video for the day and that's when I first met Joey who was like, you know, obviously like many people, he was a big hero of mine and one of the reasons I really got into like heavy metal to be honest. So it was a bit of a trip. I did, I, you know, I pulled a move where I like I gave him my band CD and stuff like that, you know, which is, you know, that's like whatever, that's kind of a green move, but it's also, it's cool. You know, he was very, very gracious. He was very nice. And uh, I really enjoyed talking to him. And, you know, I mean, Slipknot would eventually, well, Joey, Slipknot, they'd eventually take us out to play a handful of shows with them, which was also really, really cool. So that was sort of my, long story short, my early genesis into Three Inches of Blood and into touring life in general, which was, like I said, I had just, I think, turned 22. It was like 21, 22 at the time. So that was about 2007. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was crazy. I remember, you know, my parents driving me to get like to drop to drop me off uh, across the border and stuff like that, and like saying goodbye and like hopping into the van for the first time. I remember like just taking off, and I was like the last person to hop in the van. I had all my stuff, and I had like no idea really what I was doing. You know, I was as they say, I was green. But I mean. Hell, I wouldn't trade any of it at all because it was like fucking awesome. And I'm still friends with all those guys today. And I just thought I would make a video that wasn't me just playing because I like to talk to, I like to share stories and, you know, give, give props to, you know, other people as well. So I give props to Shane for like, I don't know, just having the sort of, instinct or foresight or whatever you want to call it to just like give me a call and give me a chance because that was huge so you know if you can do that for somebody I mean it, you know it might mean the world to them and it might actually pay off for you too so you know um, you know props to Shane Cam Justin Nick Cates Steve Erickson like sort of all the alumni and you know all the techs and roadies and crew we've had over the years uh, Matthias Stottlebauer Met lots of really killer people over the years. And yeah, like I said, led me to meeting uh, the Revocation guys too. And, you know, just like one thing leads to another. And now all of a sudden I'm in, I'm in that band, which I'll, I'll do another video for that, sort of my early days with that group. But I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, long live heavy metal.